Hello everybody. Welcome back to another Killing Floor 2 episode. I'm going to try out a different perk today. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and try out the support perk. Um, it's probably the other perk besides Gunslinger that I have the most experience with, as you can see here. Um, and same goes for Killing Floor 1. It's probably my second or third favorite perk to use. Um, now this perk more or less revolves around three things. First of all, you're going to have a shotgun and you're going to be running around dealing damage, significant damage to big mobs. Um, so it's a little less Walking Dead and a little more Dawn of the Dead, you know. Uh, the second thing you're going to be focusing on, uh, if you're using the perk correctly, is uh, the welding of doors which can kind of help cut off roots that the Zeds can come around to get you from behind. Um, personally, I don't do a whole lot of this because oftentimes I am in situations where I have like forgotten which doors that I've welded. But if you're in a well-coordinated team and you're able to keep the door welded con like continuously, then it's definitely a good thing to have available. Um, if, like I said, if you're here just playing by yourself, like I'm going to be, it's not too useful because you weld the door closed and then if you don't pay attention to it for a long time they can break it down and that door's broken. So, you know, the, there's positives and negatives to that. Uh, the third thing you're going to be doing, um, and this was kind of minor compared to the other two, is you're going to be able to have extra ammo and you're going to be able to give out extra ammo. Um, one of the skills that this comes with is the supplier perk which you can pick between that or just having more ammo for yourself, so it depends on what you want to do. There's obviously other perks here that, you know, just help you stay alive, give you extra power, and stumbles on the Zeds, or, you know, various things that you can unlock after playing for a long time. Um, but the typical, the, the, the ingrained perk bonuses, of course, you have the proficiency, which gives you a little extra power per level. And that's, I mean, 2% per level is fairly significant. You'll probably notice a pretty big difference as you start to level. Um, perk weapon dam. Oh, that's welding proficiency. Excuse me. I saw weapon proficiency. So you'll weld faster, which is, you know, handy. Now, the weapon damage, that's only 1%. So it's a little less significant, but you will definitely notice it. Now, the penetration is something that I was a little confused on at first, because when you think of penetration, typically you think the ability to, like, tear through armor, which obviously they're not wearing armor. Um, what it's going to do is uh, the higher the penetration, it will increase your gun's built-in penetration level, which will increase the ability of bullets to go through a Z and then go to hit another Z behind them. So if they have like a, I think, uh, most, uh, one of the shotgun weapons for this class has a penetration of like two, I think is the value. So say there's a Z that has a penetration like defense of two. Well, this perk weapon damage is going to increase that by at level five here, uh, 125%. Um, so that's going to increase it from two to like 2.5, I guess. Uh, or no, increase it by 125%, not just 25%. So, uh, so that'll make it like 4.5. So it'll tear through that zombie and then another zombie behind it and then do a little damage to one behind it if there are three stacked in a row. So it's definitely helpful for taking down mobs and the like. And it increases your grenade damage, which is always swell. Because, um, I mean, you have the typical frag grenade. So nothing unusual about that. So along with that, you also start off with a machete, which you probably won't use. In close quarters combat, you're going to have a shotgun. Pistol, which you may use occasionally if you're out of ammo. And the typical pump-action shotgun. So... Let's go ahead and get into a game. Let's play one of the older maps. I kind of like Outpost. Let's do Outpost. And once we get in, I'll kind of go over all of the guns that are going to be available to you. Like I said, this is a typical shotgunner class. So you're just going to get in close and do lots of damage. So it's definitely important to have armor if you are going to be in close like that. But 
kind of like Gunslinger, this perk is a little more self-sustaining. Minus, as I mentioned, the uh, add-on bonus of being able to weld doors. A little less helpful when you're by yourself. Because there's not as much coordination, obviously. Or, well, there's no coordination. Alright, get out of here. You have to excuse me, with some of them I still have a tendency to aim for the head from playing someone's sharpshooter. Especially the bloat, because I don't want to get barfed on. Okay, so that got two of them. So that's penetration being showcased there. Yeah, that's not good. Pincered here. Alright, let's see here. So yeah. Penetration's definitely playing a playing a role here. Would you look at that? I'm right by the pod. Okay, wait on this guy. Get out of here. Get out of here. Huh. Okay. So, the uh, next weapon you can purchase is just the double-barreled hunting shotgun, which is super powerful, as you can see, with the damage reading there. But, um, you, obviously, it's a double-barreled shotgun, so you only get two shots, and then you gotta reload, so, which is a little hard to deal with sometimes. The M4 combat shotgun, which is more or less just a better version of the starting shotgun. The pump action one that you have. Actually, I think it's semi automatic, but I'm not 100%. We'll have to check on that later. And then, of course, you have the A12 automatic shotgun, which is very fun to use. And that's all I really have to say about it. Um, We're out of time. I'm going to go ahead and get armor, because, like I said, that is important. Uh, fill this up a little bit more. And grenade. I'll save the rest for the next round. Yeah, the A12, uh, as I mentioned, it's the fully automatic. It's still very strong. It's kind of heavy, uh, but it dishes out damage very quickly, and it also uses up your ammo very quickly. So that's uh, a little more so just for taking down big guys. Like you kind of conserve that ammo a little bit more so than say with like this pump action shotgun. Found a weapon. Wait, is that another shotgun? Yeah, I already have that. We're gonna try to get outside. Oh, panic! Pop a grenade down. As with about any class or perk I play, crawlers are going to be the bane of my existence. Require you to remove your focus from the mobs that are standing tall. You're going to aim for the chest and head and such, and it makes you look down at the ground. And they jump all over you and they're fast. Oh. No fun whatsoever. Okay. Always run faster with your knife. That's probably not true in this game. So probably gonna have to get the hunting shotgun because you can expect to see scrakes and flesh pounds this round. Bring up the trading controls and upgrade your gear. It's actually pretty light. So Final choice good option. Enemies on the scope. 
uh, I'll probably try and keep using this for the majority of the time. And then switch out to the uh, double barrel when I find the big guys. Um, yeah. I was thinking earlier that I'm sure a lot of you uh, think, don't think highly of the fact that I play on normal difficulty and I should try like suicidal and hell on earth and the like but not today maybe another day I don't consider myself to be that good at this game I know my way around it but when I get swarmed as you probably notice I have a tendency to panic a little bit and if you're playing on suicidal or hell on earth well that's when you're done Oh, come on let me waste my ammo on you. Very slow. Oh. Slow, consistent damage. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say do slow, consistent damage to the flesh so I didn't freak out, but it's okay, I messed that up. Alright. So the double barrel shotgun makes pretty quick work with flesh bounds. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and kind of start working our way to the trader. Alright, all that's left is a scrake. Which isn't really surprising. I have to say, I think it's pretty cool they uh, added these little animations for when you try to reload when your gun's already full. It's kinda cool. Come on, let's go. I'm just worried for when he rushes me down. I wanna be ready. Cool. Now you got me once, but we're alright. Yeah, the ability to stay alive is probably important uh, in zombie apocalypse and, you know, in everyday life. If we run out of ammo, at least we'll have snowballs. Somehow I don't think that'll be as effective. Alright, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Get the M4. Some armor. Some more of those. That. Okay. That should be good. Uh, this thing does pretty significant damage. So, honestly, I'll probably end up using it for the majority of the round, even if. I end up fighting the big guys. I also have the hunting shotgun as kind of a backup. Another flesh pound. Oh, two flesh pounds. Whew. That worked really well. Pretty well. This thing's got pretty strong penetration, it looks like. Got some 
shells on. Oh, never mind. Never mind. We're going down this way. Ah, oh, come on. This is not like a Left 4 Dead boomer. Okay, now hopefully uh, I'll face the dock here. I'm not sure how how it works if uh yeah maybe if uh, the boss depends on the map. Like I kind of theorized earlier, or what? Um, if so, it will probably be the dock. If not, it's just up to chance. So I'm going to attempt to be at least a little conservative with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch it to semi-auto. I would rather do that and hopefully get the most out of each shell. Um, you can do that, just alternate fire, it's a middle mouse click. Um, I'm going to, let's go ahead and weld some doors just that I don't usually go through. I kind of tend to run a loop here. So, yeah, I might as well get some welding experience. Tighter than a fin's ass. Uh, alright then. Um, I might go that way, so we're gonna leave that way open. Probably won't go this way. Okay, good. So it's the doctor. I find him a little bit easier. I hope you like pain. I can't kill, but I can't see. I do like a challenge. Whew. You are just. Alright, now he's gonna. He's big. Where'd he go? Oh. I think he's gonna grab me. Oh, I thought he was. Or he's gonna be stuck in a corner so I can't move. Ah, oh, come on. Now I just gotta waste ammo on him until he can grab me. How well, he's supposed to. This is, uh, kind of jump and get away? Maybe. Ah, okay, good. Finally. Squeeze out of there. And I found some armor. Where's it gone? Now I had thought last time I fought him, he like every time he uh, lo I lowered his health down and he turned a different color, he grabbed me. Maybe they changed him. See now he's got that shield. Okay, now he's running off to heal. I guess I don't know. He's a lot different than the last time I fought him. Maybe they ch changed him in one of the more recent patches. I can see he does have like armor or something up there above his health. Oh, there he is. Okay, yeah. That's what he usually does. And from what I can tell, you can't hurt him while he's doing that. Which, 
Like I said, I'm playing on easy, so when he grabs, he doesn't take that much health. Wow, that almost took him down immediately. Oh man, shotguns are nice. That's for sure. Okay, so that's that. That's going to be a pretty, pretty quick uh, final boss fight for you. I can roll around a little bit. Didn't even use all my ammo for that. Okay, I still had, looks like, quite a few headshots. Look at that. Okay. So, that's going to be it for uh, that episode, then. And, uh, like I said, I may, I'll probably do maybe a couple more of these perk episodes. As you may have noticed on my perk screen, I don't have a lot of experience on this game with the other perks. But, um, I had a little more so in the other games, so I, I could definitely dive into, uh, probably, probably any of these, except Fire, I don't know a whole lot about Firebug and Demolitionist, I've obviously played them a little bit, but, um, but yeah, and as I said, I'm kind of open to the idea of maybe doing some kind of, like, extreme difficulty challenge other than normal, um, just to see if I can, I might record it just for fun. I'm not going to do anything specific explaining anything in that kind of video, but it'd just be kind of fun to do. Okay, well, um, that's it for this episode, everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in once again. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See ya. So what do you plan on doing about the jet problem in our community? How about the settlement problem? Another settlement needs our help. I'll mark it on your map.